Okay, so in our previous video, it was pretty long, but we had to go over these steps. We established that with Trayvon's lack of mobility or activation through the feet, could be causing all that interference or lack of, I guess, comprehensive stability and control of his weight when he's moving in dynamic movements. And on top of that, he spent a lot of time sitting for long periods of time. What's gonna happen with that accumulation of lack of mobility, lack of intentional control and stability, some injuries are gonna flare up and that's exactly what he's been dealing with, okay? In the previous video, we started analyzing his feet because if his feet are moving poorly, it channels up that kinetic chain. We looked at some stuff that was just particular for earning proprioception or intentional activation and range of motion that he was limited on because his feet were turning into kind of like claws and he was turning his feet up. And we went through those ranges of motion. Now it's warmed up. When we see those types of things, I guess, demonstrating or executing in that matter, a lot of the times it's because not only is it tight, it's also weak. We can go into some old school stuff that's gonna help us get a little bit stronger. And instead of just isolating those set areas, we're gonna start with an isolated pattern and then we're gonna get it very comprehensive or combining because a lot of the times when we have issues channeling in one position, it channels in a lot of other areas. He said he's even had some of this going on with some of his you know, lower back extension. They all add into one another. So we'll actually blend this in with some more comprehensive stuff you can do for your upper back and all that once we kind of go through some of these extra tissue work through the like feet and the ankles. So first thing you're gonna do is just a calf raise. You're gonna go as high as you can on your toes. All right, so he doesn't have an issue there per se. The only thing is if we look at how he's doing it, and he's actually pretty good at this, but we wanna make him really particular, profoundly strong in what toe? Like I feel like my heels are wiggling, you okay. know? Like, uh, like there's no Overall, there. with the full footprint, if we're talking about his full footprint, he's even better than me. He's able to get that full extension, but what does it come at the expense of? Does his big toe actually earn that stability or does he flare out? Like you said, it's wiggling. Okay, so go ahead and do it again. Maybe if you can film from the other side, that'd be great. Um, so what he's got going on is he's got that external bias happening at some points, particularly in the leg that he said he had injuries in, which is this leg, where he's flaring out. Like I'm going like Yeah. And so I just had to correct it. Right, so. but how are you going to correct it by just simply doing a regular calf raise and doing a calf raise with weights? This is how people end up with shin splints because there's such a big muscle imbalance and they don't actually use what's important to this calf raise. Calf raise is a more accentuated, more, I guess, aggressive form of a toe extension that you create when you need to sprint, okay? And a lot of the time, because of the issues, in particular, the big toe, even when he's resting, his big toe turns in. Bunnies. Most people do, mine do too. So what do we actually have to do? We have to strengthen the big toe extension in the context of everything else. So this is gonna be way harder. Put this between your feet. So you're gonna put it about here. Now this can get really hard to the point where we need to maybe give him some type of support for his balance. But now you have to squeeze the ball with your ankles. And what I want you to try to do into the set position is as I'm coming in, I'm almost gonna let my feet roll in a bit where I'm gonna use the big ball of my feet and I have to go up as high as I can. The hardest part about this is now I can get in the habit of leaning my weight ahead of my toes. I still have to earn those concepts of, uh, I guess, postural alignment. So what am I do with my pelvis? Squared up. Yeah, squeezing my glutes when I do my shoulder blades. I have to tuck my chin too. Retract it. Yeah, so I like to do it like here. And then I'm gonna come up and go as high as I can here now. So you're a little forward even. Yep. Now I'm trying right now. Oh man, what the heck? Okay. Now we didn't go over this in the previous rollout techniques. There's a good chance if this is really jammed up and no matter how hard he tries this, he seems to want to cheat a bit, we could release the lateral muscle here. But I think if we just strengthen this, and give him space like we did in those other videos, he'll get better at this and then in turn he'll stop tracking in a way where he just uses these toes. This toe does a lot of the work as well. And it's way harder. Keep squeezing the ball to let him move. If I want to get better at this or I want to make it more advanced, then what I would do is I'd actually put it between my heels. You'll work up to that, I don't want you doing that. But you can do the same thing where you put it between the heels and now it teaches you to stay aligned. The only issue is when you go there, you can still that's have a tendency close, to do this, yeah. to try to hold the ball, but that's more bad. So you can start there for now, and I don't need a lot of sets of this, I need like two sets, just so I'm getting the proper toe extension off the big toe. Because remember, that big toe attachment literally attaches into sections of the groin. If this is weak, that's not activating right, that's when the leg literally starts just flaring up. And most people walk like that. Yeah. Okay, so it's not only a issue happening in the hip extenders or the 
hip extension, particularly earning internal and external ranges of motion of the hip, which is relative to your core strength and posture aligned with a lot of times the big toe. So we have to address all these facets if we just try to adjust one of them, they're not necessarily gonna fix it per se, it'll keep coming back. So that's why we go over these things, you know, comprehensively. And again, you don't have to do this every single day, it's every second day, along with some of the other exercises which we'll show them. And in total, maybe that program looks like 45 minutes. He does it twice or three times a week. He should rehab it to the point where it shouldn't be a problem anymore. So take the time, people, to learn some of these concepts. Um, if you're not necessarily sure where to start, you can always reach out to me. and We can get you into some of these comprehensive, I guess, rehab slash performance uh, improvement type programs. So stay tuned for a couple more with Trayvon. We can keep fixing them up here.